the shortcut to success in life is two things. Yeah. One is coaching and second is accountability. If I will, will go this way, what will happen? What is the worst scenario? What will happen uh, if I fuck up this, if I fuck up this, or if I succeed in this? The choice is yours and you can't be in a position you're growing in life if you're not uncomfortable at times. Everything has to have a plan. If you're an aspiring online coach and you're looking to find out how to blow up your business today, we've got Aku, who's one of Finland's number one coaches who's just moved to Dubai. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and the podcast because we've got plenty more episodes coming out. Today, we're going to go through Aku's career and the pivotal changes that have happened to get him to where the position he is, what he's overcome and what's really working for him, in particular coming from a slightly different market in terms of the Scandinavian market in Finland. So thank you very much time for your time today, Aku. Hey, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the invite and thank you very much for uh, for the opportunity to be here. Pleasure. Um, to preface this, we were talking a little bit uh, before the podcast started in terms of you've also got a reality TV show that's coming out. But if we, if we take it back, um, how did you first get into fitness and business and how has your mindset changed from what you were doing in the beginning to now moving to Dubai, having a really successful fitness business? What do you think have been the biggest changes for you in terms of a mindset standpoint? The biggest changes for me was uh, when I first started, I was a physiotherapist and I started uh, started to get, to get like stumbling in uh, to fitness uh, when I was a early teenager and I started training myself, of course, and uh, I stopped boxing uh, I, uh, because of an injury. And then I stumbled into online coaching uh, when I were part of this Finnish company, uh, which helped other coaches to be better coaches. Uh, I did my physiotherapy on the side. I did a little bit of everything, like uh, side hustles here and there. And then I realized uh, I want to be the coach myself. I also coached uh, a few people on the side. Uh, then I started building it up. I left the company. I started little by little uh, providing more uh, content on social media, and then I, I little by little uh, got to this point. I started working with Linus, the company, which helped me scale a lot. And then I uh, figured out the real, uh, like the what is behind all uh, every, everything if you want to scale your company. And then I started producing more content, people got interested, and then uh, I just like really realized what is the potential in the market and of course, what is the potential for me in the market. Then I stumbled into seven figure scaling systems and now I'm here. <laughs> that, that's the short, short story. And I would say I was thinking about, as you said that, I think one of the biggest things that we first spoke about was maybe the limiting belief in terms of pricing yeah. and what you can charge because the Scandinavian market as a whole is actually similar to the UK in some respect where people have a, a culture of trying to sell cheaper programs at monthly prices. Um, and as soon as like you have done with a lot of your clients, you start converting to higher paid prices and upfront, it's a lot easier to make a lot more money, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, and of course, you have to remember uh, people in Scandinavia and in the UK, they are get they are used to the pre-made program. Okay, eight weeks, I, I'm doing, I'm giving it all and I have this pre-made plan for this. But does it work? Not really. And you just have to be like uh, I watched some video you you just recently did and you said that if you are really uh, if you can really stick uh, like up front of your program and, and you know what you are offering you are sure of it then you really can sell it and of course I know I know what my clients are able to do I know if I just believe in them and they start believing in them uh, by the fact that I believe in them, uh, the results are amazing. And of course, people are willing, willing also to pay for it if the results uh, back the uh, promise. And uh, what, what you, I think you're referring to is I did a sales video recently where I talked yeah. about um, 
like sales is the most important thing. Well, two, actually, no, that's technically a lie. So the most important thing is marketing because without marketing, you don't have any just want to sell. Yeah. So the second most important thing is sales after marketing because without marketing, you don't want to sell. But if you look at sales, um, the if people look at like closing rates, how good you are at sales, yeah. what the explanation I give of that is it's um, certain, sorry, it's closing, it's like sales skills yeah. times certainty and conviction. Yeah. And like certainty and conviction, like how good you are in the program, how yeah. much belief you have in terms of how it works. And I remember when we first spoke um, on Zoom before you joined the program, like you, I think even you said to me, it's like, you're very sure this is gonna work. And I'm like, you fucking will do, because I've done it so many times. And it's the same thing for you, because <laughs> when, like, you're laughing because it's true, because when people can tell that in your body language and your voice, which is why I'm smiling now, yeah. like it's not really a sell, because they can feel your energy in terms of how much yeah. you know this is gonna work. Well, sometimes I just laugh on calls. Because yeah. like, I've spoken to people before, and like, what you're doing is retarded. Like this, I literally said to people, I was like, how, I don't make, how you don't make money is what you're doing. It's yeah. so like, you, you do that like the other way around, you make a lot more. And um, if you're honest with people on that, and you also say it with like 100% conviction, yeah. they, they, that's the biggest thing that can make the most difference to sales. And of course, you believed, and, mm. and gladly you did, because God damn, that, that was the most expensive Zoom call I've <laughs> have ever had. <laughs> and it all happened so quickly. But you said to me that, yeah, we can scale you up from here to here. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. And then uh, suddenly I went to my bank account and see, saw that, oh, it was uh, okay. And now I'm into the program. Okay. And yeah, uh, but I think that uh, the limiting belief in yourself and it also, the clients also has have, have it. So it's all about uh, breaking that belief that, yeah, you can do it. Uh, whenever, whatever is possible then, because the one thing you also said when I was a hesitant, a hesitant about uh, moving to Dubai, uh, I was freaking out. I'm, I, I, I do like stress about things, mm. certain things and, and uh, things I don't really have to stress about. And I was stressing about it and I was like thinking like, this ain't right. I just, I, I will just be better to stay in Finland and, and build it up there and try everything there. Um, but you said that Dubai makes you think bigger. That's exactly what Dubai has done. Uh, I have just recently realized that, okay, I can do this. I can build it up even higher. And I have my goals set for this year. I have my goals set for next year. Whatever comes next com is coming, but uh, these two years, three years, four years, I'm, I'm willing to spend here. I will make mo the most out of it. And the mindset is totally different here. And the, your mindset is based upon your exposure of like yeah. what's in front of you, who yeah. you speak to, what you see every day. So like I actually, I came back from Miami two days ago. I was there for two weeks and I was hanging around with people. A lot of people were making a million dollars a month. Some of them were making, one of the guys was worth like $200 million. And I was on his boat like three times. And it, it like changed my perception of a lot of things like just being around people at a really, really high level because you suddenly realize how big the game is and it, you're still thinking too small. Yeah. And a really good book I'd recommend anyone to read is um, 10X is Easier Than 2X, which is very true because a lot of people try and scale their business by just grinding themselves into the ground by doing more volume and output. And that was me. Like I did that for a very long time, probably until about two years ago. Yeah. And then I suddenly realized, okay, the most important thing you really need is leverage to grow the business. And if you look at people who are successful, they change their way of thinking to try and create more leverage in everything they do. What we're doing right now is leverage. People are gonna listen to this back and, um, like after you've had this conversation over and over again, when we're both dead, which is morbid, but it's yeah. true. So that's a form of leverage. So the more leverage you can create in your life and business, the more success you can almost achieve on autopilot. Yeah. And uh, that's actually a thing about leverage is also, also uh, like spending some money to get more, mm. uh, get more knowledge actually. And that's, that's the, in fact, I, I didn't realize before, I was, I was thinking like, okay, if I spend some money uh, learning something, some new skill, I just saw it that, okay, I have the skill. Okay, I, I can learn something. But if you turn it to, 
if I spend some money, I can make it double, triple the amount if I just learn something, if I'm more valuable as a person. So that's that's also a thing people don't realize until they see it. And now I have saw seen it because uh, I have been able to learn new skills, n- learn new new way of thinking, and being able to scale it also. And that is in essence the game. The yeah. game is that you add. Life is a game of skill acquisition. Yeah. And then skills stack on top of themselves. So like, I'll explain, and they multiply. So you learn the skill of um, copywriting, so writing text that sells. You learn how to run Facebook ads. Those two multiply off each other. You learn to talk really well on camera. They, all three of those multiply off other. You start to put these different things together. You then basically have superpowers to sell things on the internet. And that's basically the goal. And that's, that's I think that's the same as you. Uh, for example, I, I see every... Every part in my life has a meaning uh, because, yeah, I was in this company uh, helping other coaches to coach and helping. I was doing CEO, uh, no, uh, SEO, well, what is SEO, it? Yeah. SEO, yeah, uh, for Google Ads. I was doing Canva tem- templates for other coaches to promote their their brand, brand and programs. I was doing all kinds of uh, like s- everything that does not include coaching and i was pissed about it i was like i'm a coach i want to be i want to be coaching i don't want to do this shit uh, there's there must be someone else to do this but now as a company owner i see that okay i can do it for example editing i edit my videos still which is not good i edit my videos uh, myself but I know the quality. I know that okay. This is the, uh, this is the, like, this is what I want from the video. This is how I want it to look. This is how I want it to flow. And when I'm now searching for an editor for me, I'm, I want the, uh, like the videos to be as good as I would be doing them. Or I know the. Uh, how do you say it? the like what you expect of it expectations yeah the expectations and of course i know what i expect when i uh will use uh, like marketing uh, and, and paid marketing i know what i'm searching for and that's also a lesson learned and this is why it's also uh, I'll, I'll take an example like facebook ads right yeah. so like a lot of people make a big mistake in terms of delegating Facebook ads to ads agencies and lose a lot of money very quickly. Yeah. Part of the problem is this, that people are trying to delegate what they don't understand and they don't know how to do. So like, how can you communicate to someone how you want something done unless you understand the process to some base degree? Which is why for you to be successful at a higher level potentially, you need to have a base understanding of a lot of different skill sets. And at yeah. Google, they basically want people what I call a T. So like yeah. a T-shape. So you know... Um, a lot you know a little about a lot of different things but you can go deep on one thing so like maybe it maybe it be facebook ads you're an expert on that but you understand funnels email automations everything else like those are the type of people they look for and that's almost the way that entrepreneurs need to be because you need to have a base understanding of everything otherwise you have no idea how the game in the system works yeah and uh i think that as you said every entrepreneur should be like that I think that every entrepreneur should also count uh, the total cost of their hour. Think, try to uh, like turn it around so that uh, if I would be an employee, what would the employer have to pay, pay for me for the hour or for the job I'm doing, for the skills I'm having? Because that's also a, a total a mindset shift. Uh, then you you can believe more for, uh, of yourself when you are counting it. For example, you, how much would you need for somebody to pay you for an hour to work for him? Uh, this is a really good question. So I'll give you an example. I've turned down people who want me to PT them at thousand dollars an hour. Yeah, I won't do it mm. because I know my time's actually worth more than that. So statistically, like two grand an hour, maybe I would do it, yeah. but but I still wouldn't because. Yeah. Um, 
I do more the coaching from a business side for fulfillment and enjoyment rather than a monetary value because I'd be better off just taking the time and putting it into my own business transparently. But I get a huge amount of fulfillment from helping other people. Um, and like I can say one thing to you and it makes you a lot of money very quickly. And for me, that's a huge like fulfillment point um, and fills my proverbial cup, right? And I think that's an important thing for people to understand. Yes, you need to understand your worth, but also I'll also turn people down in terms of if I don't think they're a good fit or I don't want to work with them. Like I quoted someone $100,000 to work for me to coach them for a year because I didn't really want to do it. And that's like, the, like if they paid, I was like, at what point is this worth it? And like, I knew they had a lot of money. I was like, 100 grand, are like, I'll, it's worth it. I'll do it for a year. Like, yeah. and outside of that, but that was actually a good thing because it was very empowering to me to be like, yeah, it's $100,000. If you want to do it, I'll do it. Like, if not, I'm fucking, I'm out because it's not worth the hassle from my side of things and I don't need the money. And when you're at that point, like life becomes very powerful because you can choose from an abundant mindset. And like the human brain almost has like two parts that you have like the visionary brain, which is where you want to be for like running a business. Yeah. And it was like the reptilian brain, which is like the old part of your brain from like being a fucking living in a cave. And that's the tar- part that tends to come out most for most people is a reptilian brain where like people have scarcity, they're worried about things going wrong all the time, they're stressed. And if you're in that mental state, you can't think clearly and make the right decisions. So the more you can put yourself in like that visionary part of your brain, like the abundance mindset, the better your decision making gets and generally the better your business and life gets. Yeah. And that's also uh, one skill you have. It's like, for example, turning down these offers and, and uh, you know what you are worth. I also I, I also try to be better at it, uh, but still I'm, I'm confusing, confusing myself and, and spending time so do the shit I don't I don't really need to do and they don't provide me any value or or any money and I'm trying to get better and better uh, at it and and trying to trying to be more more valuable myself also, of course also and this is an interesting thing for you to understand if everyone listening to understand the more valuable you become as a human being the more value that comes to you the more you can charge so like f- for you for example you going on this big TV show that's technically going to make you more valuable person because you have more status. People want to work with people with status and you can create more of a brand. And in my opinion, the way society is going, the world is going, people don't want to sell, don't want to be sold to. People don't buy because they're being sold to, they buy because of brand. If you look at like Apple, you don't buy buy an iPhone because it's being sold to you. You don't buy a Tesla because it's being sold to you. You buy into things because of the brand of what they are and what they represent and your perception of them. And that's what your why your future looks so bright, in particular with a lot of things you have coming on. Yeah, no, actually, I'm not sure if you even know uh, or knew, but uh, this is the second program I was into. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, in 2021, I, I think uh, I was in Love Island, Finland, and that's that's the program I leveraged to my uh, coaching. Actually, I gained a ton of followers and I was known as the Love Island Aku. I was known as the uh I was known as the friend zone guy. <laughs> I, I Is that ju- why you coach so many women? Yeah, 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 I, I just made I just made made a bunch of friends <laughs> <laughs> and tr- and I had so many partners there but uh, I'm just on a friend zone with her and yeah it was all about that. But uh I suddenly re- realized that I have a new market there I was pro- providing massage therapy and physio then but then I when I started online coaching I was thinking that okay these are the potential clients I have there and of course I know I can do it I know I can make people lose some weight and and shred some fat so let's make the most out of it it was a hard thing to do uh, to change the perspective in the uh, followers' eyes, as I was shown, as I was seen as Lava uh, Raku, and uh, to be the coach, to be the man I'm now, it was so hard to do. I'm hoping the best that this program won't do the same thing that I'm seen as the uh, Call Me a Drama or Love Triangle Aku. I'm hoping the best, but if so happens. It takes 
little bit of time for me to switch it around again. But now, at least I have a firm base, and uh, people's belief that okay, I, I'm I'm a professional in my. Well, people life. will come to you and they'll see what you do and what you're yeah. about already, which is what's different, right? And I think the way I'd explain that analogy, and I think about it a lot in business, is like you have the mouse trap now you bring the mice yeah so like you have everything ready and now the traffic's going to come it's going to make a big difference and i think what a lot of people make the mistake of is they they almost do it the wrong way around in a lot of respects in businesses sometimes they try and build a big following and they have no idea what they're trying to do with it mm. or like they build like loads of fulfillment in a program but then they can't sell it and like when you have to have like proof of concept so you build something people actually want and then when that actually works you then and it's systematized to be attractive to pull people in you then get more people in like the top of the funnel and that's basically like going on a tv show and then you can scale yeah uh, and there's a bunch of people having tens of thousands of followers and they are broke they are yeah they are not doing anything for it uh they're having the money laying around of course there and they just it just needs them to find a way to leverage it but uh what are you searching uh they are just getting a dopamine hit from the likes and for the fo- followers and not not implementing it in any way that's like retarded yeah but this is what I, this is one of the biggest issues with social media and this is the probably one of the biggest problems with fitness people who get pulled into fitness generally tend to be very narcissistic and ego driven you put that with social media and like dopamine from likes follows all this other crap people actually build their social media for the wrong reasons and they create content which is good for virality but terrible in terms of actually running a business yeah. and i think i see people often almost like selling their soul to try and get views and likes whereas the reality is they actually are probably losing parts of themselves in the process of doing that and i think what's important for you is to understand like what is the point of social media and what is it you want to represent yeah and actually uh, that's something seven figures have uh, taught to me that uh, everything has to have a plan you have to have a plan what you're uh, aiming uh, or where you're aiming with your company or with your service you have to have a plan what you're uh, what you're doing with your social media you have to have have a plan with a specific post what does this post uh, or what what is the meaning of this post and when you just pre-plan it and then you execute it it's all golden uh, but some of the coaches for example in Finland doesn't understand anything from it and they don't have any clue they're just providing content oh this is a nice recipe and, and hoping for the best yeah yeah I get more likes what do you do with the likes doesn't pay your bills yeah <laughs> and it's not going to pay for your future family and I think yeah. that's a framework people need to think of what would you say are some of the mindset issues people maybe have from Finland and other Scandinavian countries uh, it's the the I think they are too humble and and uh, I'm not sure. It's like, well, I just have to stick on my lane and 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 get 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 my salary from an employer because I'm I I have been used to it, and that's the uh, certainty of things. They are not willing to risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I have, uh, uh, yeah, well. You can go wrong, you can go wrong, but of course, you always learn from it. If you do mistakes, you learn from it. And I'm sure you have done it. <laughs> so many. Yeah. I've made more mistakes than anyone. Yeah. Uh, what was the uh, the guy you, you paid like... $80,000 to Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but like, everything happens for a reason. And like, the way I explain it in particular with men is like, I, I give the analogy of like driving a car really fast. It's like men, we drive a car really, really fast, we nearly crash. Yeah. We drive a car really fast, we nearly crash. We do it like hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. And then you crash and it's not until you crash and you fuck it up that you then have a lesson yeah. of like, yeah, I probably shouldn't drive like that. Yeah. Um, like pain is, uh, sorry, like pain is knowledge really fast. And that's a really important thing for people to understand that you learn from mistakes and the way I try and set up my life is that I spoke about leverage early as one of those things, but the other is like stacking things where I can take calculated risk. So like I, I, I'm big into crypto. I talk about that sometimes. I have 
three quarters of a million, million dollars worth of crypto, depending on what day it is. Um, that could all go to zero. I have no fucking idea. But yeah. the, the, the probability, no one, anyone who's listened to this, no one has a fucking idea really what's happened. I, it's not going to happen, but my opinion. Um, <laughs> but there's a strong possibility that could five, 10 X. That five, 10 yeah. Xs, I'm like game over, I'm done. Yeah. Um, could I lose the money? Yeah, but, but like, am I willing to take the risk to reward ratio? Yes. And I think people need to understand that in life. It's like when I left my full-time job as an estate agent where I was earning $100,000 a year, had a really secure job, was also making $10,000 a month from online coaching on the side. Like I gave up something that was very safe to go and take a load, load of risk. But the way I thought about it was that, okay, if this fails, I'll just get another job doing what I was doing before. I was really fucking good at it. I'd get another job straight away. So what's the worst case scenario? Yeah. The failure is not t not trying and not taking the leap and not taking the risk. Yeah. And I constantly take risks and spend money. Like last, the reason I was in Miami was at Masterminds. I'm going to Paris next week for another Mastermind. It's constantly to like learn and I might go there and learn nothing, but I could go there and learn one thing that changes my entire life. Yeah. Someone could say one thing that changes my perception of something. And even when I was in Miami, a couple of people said a couple of things to me that really changed my perception that there's no way that that won't make me millions over the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Just from like a couple of things people said to me, I was like, not something I learned, but just a, a slight change of direction in my thought process. Yeah. And as you said, everything happens for a reason. For mm -hmm. example, uh, my background from boxing, I, uh, I was an overweight, overweight kid and I started my, my mornings with uh, Coca-Cola and not the zero one, the, the original, full, the good the one. Full, yeah, the good one, and uh, and with a uh, like a packet of biscuits, yeah, chocolate chip cookie biscuits. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And this, well, that was my breakfast. And uh, uh, <laughs> over the years, it started to show. I, I played a lot with my uh, computer, uh, Call of Duty. Uh, I Which was, one? Yeah, Call of Duty Four. Uh, Modern, Modern Warfare. Yeah, yeah Modern yeah. Warfare Two. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I wasted my like entire A levels. Uh, and I, 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 I was good at it. Yeah. God damn, I was good. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I'm not sure if I would have continued. I would be an esports yeah. professional, maybe, but gladly I didn't. Uh, Call of Duty doesn't, doesn't get you girls, <laughs> but they uh, well, probably not the girls you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, then I stumbled into boxing. I started uh, training, and I I started. I wanted to lose weight because all of my friends had six pack. I didn't have six pack. I was like, how do I get that? Because six pack was attractive to girls, mm. and I was like, okay. So I started, and I went like balls to the walls, full, uh, like 100%. Uh, suddenly it turned into this kind of obsession. I wanted to train this much uh, and I wanted to eat uh, this little. I wanted to do this and this and this. I, I ate like two apples a day and, and uh, uh, quark uh, or fosh uh, yogurt. And it was all I ate. And when I was a teenager growing up, that was not the most healthiest way to live my life. And uh, over, the, over the time, I trained so much. I trained like five hours a day. Uh, I, I, of course, uh, handled uh, school. I was in a relationship then, a lot of stress. And it came up to, to the point that uh, my endocrine system uh, went like total trash my hormone levels dropped i was i was like miserable f teenager then uh, and then they started uh i went to the doctor of course they started uh investigating it of course and uh, i was uh, prescribed with different medications for it and i also had to learn i had to take the uh, physiology physiology book and start reading about endocrine system, about the hormones, about everything that happens in your body to understand it better and to know what they are prescribing me and what they are uh, doing uh, or what the doctors are saying. And I think that, and of course, I mean, I'm still uh, with several medications now, and I'm this young, but I see that it has had a reason. I can help now. Uh, for example, there is 
a lot of women having like uh, hormone fluctuations they shouldn't have uh, uh, men in my program men uh, who are suffering from low testosterone levels we are trying to uh, like up, up the levels of course uh, in natural ways and if that's not possible i will guide them to a doctor and that has had a big impact to help others and i see that okay by learning this and by going through all that shit myself i can help others to not not to have not have to go to go through that not have as much pain as you have. yeah as as i have had and i think that it's a valuable lesson even though it has cost me my health actually and what you said there relates to me a lot and in what i've done in a business perspective so like i'll give an, i'll give context right so like one of the reasons I've been so driven on like a war path is to like make my parents proud of me. I had probably a bit of a chip on my shoulders. Like, and last summer, my dad said to me for the first time, he's like, it's amazing what you've done, but it's cost you like everything to get to it. And I was like, fuck. I was like, that was like a fucking two way thing. Right. Yeah. But it did give me a lot of perspective and that really realigned of why I set up seven figure scaling systems is to help people not have all the fuck ups and problems that I had. Like Facebook accounts getting disabled, Stripe accounts getting disabled, disabled on Instagram. I've had uh, lost $8,000 hiring the wrong people, like all type, like any problem anyone has ever had in the fitness business, I've had a like major scale. And that's just from not having the right advice and no one to guide me through the path. And it's the same thing of like you helping people from a hormonal point of view, me helping people from a business point of view, it's easy to navigate and avoid the iceberg when you've already hit the iceberg before so you can see where it is. And the way I explain it in like a business perspective and be the same from fitness is like, I'm above the maze, you're in the maze, you're trying to get out, you don't want to go left or right, where I can be like, yeah, just go straight, right, left, and you're out. Yeah. Whereas like most people spend four or five years in the maze, it gets messy and they eventually get out. Whereas like yeah. you can do it in six to 12 months if you just had the fucking route. Yeah, and of course also, you have to take in consideration consideration that uh, even though you would know what what to do, people don't still do it, and and that's about the accountability you right, have to have. Say. Yeah, yeah, because you have to be accountable. Of course, mm, uh, we both uh, are like high level. Uh, we we train. Uh, we don't need motivation to go no. train. Uh, we do it, but for example vacuum training uh abs and and all that little shit you don't want to yeah 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 just like oh fuck yeah i just leave it later i i, I just I do something for my business <laughs> uh so that's you have to be accountable and of course a, a proper coach will keep you accountable seven figures is keeping me accountable yeah even though i pl I, I like plan out everything everything and the fact that there's someone you have to report. There's someone who is keeping you accountable to do the shit you uh, have uh, like promised to do. That's also the main factor I think that uh, people can really succeed. Whether it is their weight loss goal or building up their business or anything. The shortcut to success in life is two things yeah. one is coaching and second is accountability because yeah. one the coaching can give you the shortcut of how to get there the accountability can keep you to do it yeah. because particularly there's no disrespect for anyone listening to this like if you're a beginner coach like I could get an online coaching business to fucking if I start tomorrow to 5k a month in a week probably with a new Instagram account on just starting from scratch because I, I would just try and find one person and sell them at 5k yeah <laughs> like I'd be like that's what I would do um and that sounds a bit facetious, but it's true. And that's the reality of like, when you've done it before, you know how. And the reality is that people, they fail because they're not willing to take the risk and try and do something new. Or they like, they dip their toe in the water. The problem is they dip their toe in the water, they'll get smashed by someone like you or me because I'm not gonna dip my toe in the water, I'm gonna jump in. Yeah. And the problem is you can't dabble in these things. You have to like commit or don't bother. And that's my advice to everyone. And one of the most stupid things, I see people do is like, 
I'm quitting my job. I'm going all into online coaching. I'm like, cool. To, like, what's the plan then? Like, I haven't got one. Cool. So, do you have anyone coaching you? No. So, it's like, this makes no sense. Yeah. The best advice I'd give anyone is actually keep your job and then pay someone to teach you how to build a business. That will get you ahead much faster and you'll feel a lot less stressed because you know you have income coming in from here and then this is just something you're trying to build. And the biggest mistake most people make is they're like, yeah, I'm all in, I'm burning the boats, we're going to go and do this. And I was like, okay, so what's the plan? How are you doing it? And no one has any fucking clue. And it comes back to what you said earlier about like, you have to have a plan for everything. Not to the point in terms you have to have a massive business plan, but you have to understand a rough idea of how I'm going to do this. And that's that's actually something I do like not 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 daily, but uh, almost weekly uh, with the decisions I have to do with the business. Uh, I I take note, uh, just like a, a notepad or a piece of paper. I write down the X if I will go this way, if I will, will go this way. What will happen? What is the worst scenario? What will happen? Uh, if I fuck up this, if I fuck up this, or if I succeed in this. And of course, uh, I usually do also a, like a um, backup plan for it. What if this fucks up? Can I go back to this one? And when you are just building it up as a plan on a piece of paper, just like an easy uh, step-by-step uh, process, that makes life a lot of easier like it's like you can see it there for example uh when you uh ended your career as a real estate a- agent uh i'm sure uh, i'm sure that you uh, figured out a way h- what you're going to do and how you're going to do it but also you knew the fact that okay if i fuck up in this one uh i can still i have the skill i can still go back And here's a framework I look at in decision-making with business. And it's like whether something's a one-way door or a two-way door. So, for example, a two-way door would be the... uh, I'll I'll give a good example. We Just before this video podcast, um, we were filming a video sales letter, basically a a sales video that we put on a landing page. We're going to send ad traffic to, and we're going to try and sell a $10,000 coaching program on ads for fitness. Now, this is an example of a two-way door because... I might set this up, uh, we might put $5,000 into ads, the whole thing completely fucks up and doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work, I can step back out the door and it, yeah, I've lost some money, but that's fine. Um, an example of like a one-way thing would be, for example, I'm going to, okay, me moving to Dubai and getting divorced. Like that was a one-way door decision. Like once you've done that, you can't undo that. Yeah. And two-way door decisions you can make quickly. And I would go with your gut feeling as quickly as possible. The one-way door scenario where you can only go one way through it, that's something that you need to take time to really like ascertain whether that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. but you also have to have the. Uh, I I think that courage. The, yeah, yeah, the courage and and I think that the gut feeling is, mm. is you know the best. yeah yeah you know you know what's right. Um, for me, uh, like uh, when I was in a part of the company, uh, I had the I had to make the decision that to sell my shares and and uh, take a beating from it uh, because the situation was uh, a little bit tough there then I, I I knew that I would be losing some money uh, a whole lot of money uh, and of course I I was in the middle of okay I have this stable job I have this and but I'm limiting myself that I cannot do the the real uh, job the, or the real thing I want to do, and and I had to take the risk. How old were you at this time? Uh, I was 20, 20, 20 years old, I think. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's a one way door, but uh, and of course I went through it and through it and through it again. And, uh, can I go back? Can I? What can I do? I can't go back. I can't. I can never come come back to it, and. But not to cut you off one thing, yeah. I bet you that gave you a fuckload of motivation. Yeah, that gave me. And that, that was the thing uh, that made the si- decision. Uh, like, uh, I, I just decided that, okay, I will go uh, through this route and, and let's see what happens. I might lose everything, hmm, but hey, at least 
it was a fun ride and and I be, learned, be cool, I, oh, the way I look at it, it'd be a cool story, right? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I learned something. Uh, I learned uh, about Google Ads and about Canva templates. Uh, and I can't remember what I said to my girlfriend the other day. It, to be fair, it's probably a moronic statement at the time. But I was like, if it doesn't work, it'd be a cool story. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, like you know, I said the eight thousand dollar thing. Like, you, you do these things and they go really badly. It's like, well, I tried and it didn't work, and this is something we we did. It, it fucked up. And I think the reality is, the more stories you can tell in life, probably the better life you've had to some degree. And what's important is you were twenty years old that time. That's why I asked. Yeah. From twenty to thirty is when you got to take risk. Like, at that point, like, what other liabilities did you have? You don't have kids. You don't have a partner you're supporting. Like I appreciate it's different when people get older and it's harder to make decisions then. But if you're in a phase of life, you're 20 to 30, 30 to 35, like maybe I am, um, you're then in a phase where like, this is your chance to take risk and really try and go big quick. Like you can't do that when you're 45 because you've got other responsibilities. And that's an important thing for you to understand that the younger you are, the more risk you should be taking because you've also got time to bounce back if it fucks up. Yeah. I spoke about crypto earlier. I could lose a million dollars in crypto tomorrow. The whole thing could fucking fall apart, right? But the reality is, if that happens, I can know I can make the money back in the next year. I can make money back in the next 20 years. So I know I have time. It's not like I'm 65 and that's all my money in retirement. If that goes, I can never get any more again. And when you start to think like that, like life becomes very limitless and you get back into that like visionary abundance mindset I spoke about earlier. Yeah, and that, that limitless mind, that mindset a lot of a lot of uh, Finnish people would need it because uh, I think that, like, for example, me, I am t- 27 years old, and I see it in my, you know, or in our field, uh, our time is uh, I- we have a we have a, like this kind of a window a window, yeah. So if you are 50 years old and and you are trying to sell program for six pack apps. Do you have six pack apps, or, or how how can you sell it? Because we are the face of our our brand, and of course, if you are young, you look healthy, you uh, you have the body. Of course, people want also what you have then, and and uh, you have the window open. Then you should like really make the most out of it. And uh, this is also something that pe- people don't understand in Finland. They just say that, okay, maybe someday, uh, maybe later. Someday may never someday, come. Someday, right? yeah, someday. And then they, uh, then they are 30, plus 30 years old. They have families and uh, they are still in, in their shitty jobs and living that nine to five life but but that's when they they're imprisoned because you can never get out of that point right. once a point like and it's great that people have these things but once you have children like i, I would love to have children one day i haven't been fortunate enough to have that yet yeah. but when they have children they've got a mortgage they've got a wife they've got support like how much risk can you take then yeah not a lot mm. so you're fucked and that's like the reality of the way the system works and actually slightly off topic slavery was abolished a long time ago, right? Yeah. But if you think about what was given in slavery, here's an interesting framework to think about. In slavery, people worked and they were giving a house and food. Yeah. Okay, so now what happens? You work, you're giving money, f- just enough money for generally just house and food. So nothing's really changed, just money sits in the middle. Yeah. And it's called a job. Yeah. And that's where the reality people need to actually understand that like, particular like less paying jobs, it's a form of slavery to some degree and it's for you to choose your own destiny in life because we live in a world now with more opportunities lower barriers to entry with so many things that you have the capability to change your entire family's true like tree and like future and that's one of the things i really think about a lot is like how can i break the future for my family and like change the entire dynasty of that and also help other people do that because anyone on this planet has the ability to do it if they're willing to actually be open-minded and put in the work to do it. Yeah, and that, that's also a, a courage I try to give to my clients. And as cliche as it sounds, yeah, um, this kind of motivating bullshit mm. we are talking about now, it's true. Mm. It's true. And now I'm, I'm 
almost like weekly, I have some client messaging me that, okay, I have rough hours at work. I, I'm, my boss doesn't even, even uh, hear me when I try to say that, no, okay, my list is full. I cannot do uh, like this, this job and this task and this task. And, and I have said to them several times that, okay, uh, count what you are worth of. You, you know you are a good employee. Uh, why do you work there? Why don't you work somewhere else? Why don't you go uh, to the route uh, you are uh, like respected in or what you, uh, where you can do what you really want to do? I try to encourage them, but yeah, still, okay, but this is paying me, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, not so, it's not so difficult. You just have to believe in yourself and, of course, take the leap. And, of course, uh, believe the bullshit we are talking about because it's not bullshit. It, it, and then I also say, like, not every day you feel great and you want to do it. Yeah. Like, yesterday I felt like dog shit. I had eight hours of Zoom calls back to back. And then today I still feel pretty crap with, like, jet lag and tired. I was up filming at 8 a.m. on the beach. Mm -hmm. I'm here filming video sales letters, podcasts. I was like... Sometimes you have to do it even though you don't feel like it or you feel a bit crap. Like you just get on with it and you deal with it and that's life. And an interesting thing I'll ask you is that probably when you first started online, people probably asked you like, why are you doing this, right? Like yeah. why are you posting content while you're doing this? Yeah. But then I probably guess you get people now ask you, how have you done this? Yeah. Yeah, they do. And that's also like uh, uh, so funny that I... In the beginning, I knew, I knew why I'm doing it, and I just said to every everyone asking, why, why are you, why are you spending so much time filming that content and editing it? Uh, does it pay you? No, no, it doesn't pay me now. But I have the plan. I have the plan when it will play, pay me, and when people see it now, they they are like, okay, I. I I quite know what you have done, but how? Really, how? How can I make that happen? Mm. And this is where you have to be a strong man and show courage, because I'll give an example. When I first started making content myself, I remember people saying at the gym, not even to me, but behind my back, like, why is Charlie doing this? Why is he posting photos of himself topless? Who does he think he is? All this type of shit. And I could have let that hold me back so other people stop me from achieving my dreams and help other people to achieve their dreams but the way i looked at it was like fuck you like this is what i'm gonna go and do and approve a point and i remember seeing one of those people maybe like three years ago and i looked at him he looked at me and like neither of us had to fucking say anything but he like he knew and i fucking knew yeah yeah and that's actually uh, uh that's the like one of the best or one of the uh biggest things that uh, divides uh, the Dubai mindset mm. and the mindset people are having here, the mostly entrepreneurs and for at least uh, at Binus mm. where we t train at, that what uh, like makes the difference uh, to Finland. For example, in Finland, there's few gyms that has the same kind of mindset, bodybuilding, like uh, a lot of like uh, bodybuilders and, and fitness influencers go there. But still, if you are filming with a tripod, people are looking like, what the fuck is he doing? I remember doing that in Helsinki to people. People were yeah. like, who's this yeah, fucking yeah. English kid? Yeah. Or, or somebody will ask you or, or come to say that, yeah, I, I don't want to be in the film. Yeah. I, I just don't film me. And, and they are making a complaint of, of it. But in Binus, Everybody has their mics on. Everybody is producing content. Everybody is doing their own no thing. No one cares. Yeah, no one cares. M America's like, I was in Miami last week. No one gives a shit. Yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. And that's like, uh, people are also afraid to do it in Finland, of course. Uh, well, I have, my, I have my camera here. And, and that's, that's not like a, a thing you do. And that's not... Because they just... The mindset is so limited. It is. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to film anything to post anything or, or to make this kind of a reel or something. And now when people are, are really uh, getting the, the salary from it here, it's, it's just normal. 
and, and that's where people need to understand is like choose your suffering yeah. so you can choose to suffer now making content and finding things hard when you start or you can suffer the rest of your life in mediocrity in terms of having a life you don't like yeah. and the, the choice is yours and you can't be in a position you're growing in life if you're not uncomfortable times I'm constantly uncomfortable 95% of the time because I'm trying to put myself in environments where I'm trying to level up or learn things or do something I've never done before or I've seen no one else do before and that's where you have to be if you want to get to the next level you want to be like the top 1% and the beautiful thing is that it's like anything you, it's like training right you get um, a customised to things so you get used to bench pressing 100 kilos like that's easy you then go to 120 like that's easy you get to 140 that's easy and it's the same thing in terms of like your ability and work first time I spoke on camera like if someone looks at my fitness YouTube Charlie Johnson and he looks at the original videos they're so fucking bad I remember the first time I filmed on YouTube someone put a camera in front of me I was like I couldn't get the fucking words out and I was like what the fuck is wrong with me and like now I can just talk off the fucking cuff and just podcast whatever and it just comes naturally so like it takes time to learn but most people aren't willing to start to learn yeah yeah and of course you have to you have to listen to bullshit also mm. about it um, for example from your videos I think that there were a lot of negative comments mm. and of course uh, Bro, all what, the time. The, what the fuck is he doing uh, in front of the camera and uh, that's also something I try to like mm, give to my clients I I, I always uh, like I uh, for example if you have some kind of a social meeting you want to lose your weight and you are going to the uh, party, you're going to the uh, this social event, and y- you just would like to stick on your diet, eat what you have on your diet, and you, you don't even want to uh, eat the shit. Eat, like, yeah, eat the shit uh, people are eating there. But still, well, you're pressurized. Because, yeah, you're pressurized because they are looking me differently if I if I eat my chicken and, and rice or if if I eat this and that. And and I just cut the crap there. And why? Because <laughs> you just have to understand that you have to hear the bullshit. Yeah, you can you can just ignore it because you are aiming for something. You and most likely you are going to achieve it if you go just by your plan and just ignore the bu- bullshit. That's also something that p- people. For example, the content creation. When you are filming yourself with a tripod, there's many people laughing. What the fuck is he doing? Why is he? Uh. But then it comes back to what yeah. I said to you earlier. They ask, like later on, they ask how. Yeah. How have you done this? Yeah. All that shit you used to take the piss out me for. That's like that's how it is. Yeah. And that's that's what my clients also say. Yeah, that oh, my friend asked me how have I lost lose this much? Well. You have eaten uh, what you have written on your diet, and uh, not been on the parties, drinking and and e- eating pastries. <laughs> See, simple as that. And I think that one important message for anyone to take home from this is that people will lash out from insecurity. They'll try and get you to fail because you succeeding makes them feel bad and inferior. And when you someone starts to do that to you, you should take that as a sign of pollock. Like, a positivity because it shows you're trying to grow and they're trying to stay where they are and the reality is in life if you're going upwards and they're staying here like you're naturally going to pull apart and that's okay it doesn't make you a bad person and if you're an entrepreneur and you want to achieve great things you do need to surround yourself with great people yeah yeah so to, to wrap things up what would you say is the if you had to give one piece of advice for um, anyone who's an online coach who wants to get to the next level what do you think is the biggest things that changed your you from a mindset point of view maybe to get to where you want to be search around i think uh let me give you a context Uh, in finland there's few companies running the market Mm. there is few companies really like pushing through every every single one of the coaches uh, are uh, under this brand or this brand there's two to three brands providing the platform, providing everything. Just search around. Something outside of Finland can be more valuable for you and become less expensive also if you just search around and find something that fits you. 
I was glad that uh, I came to the mastermind event. I didn't know where I was coming to. First time uh, we met, I had this screenshot from an Instagram <laughs> post. I didn't even know the Instagram account. I was like, okay, and this is like mastermind. I came to the uh, Palms, I came to Hilton Hotel. I was like, I'm coming to this event to for online coaches. I didn't even know this was, was mastermind. Then for the, uh, like for the first hour and the first lecture, I was like, fuck. I learned like 10 different things I have not learned from the company I work with now. What is this? And that's how I search around, searched around. And that's, that's how I came through. And that's, th that's the, I think that uh, it has been a game changer. I think now I'm here because of it, because of courage uh, it has gave me. And I think that that's the most valuable lesson to learn for every single one. Search around. And what I say to you, I love from that, as you, you had the courage to go to something, you had no fucking idea what it was or what, who, who we were or anything, and just went on a whim. And that's often the way I think is like, like see what happens. Like, yeah. Because I said earlier, like me going to Miami or going to Paris next week, I could have one conversation with one person that changes my entire fucking life. Yeah. And it's as simple as that. And it's what has happened, mm. <laughs> actually. Yeah. And it's as easy as that. So where can people find out more about you, Aki? Uh, from social media, uh, from Instagram. Uh, What's Instagram? Uh, Aku Virtanen, uh, PT Virtanen, okay. and, and from TikTok also. Okay, yeah. we'll drop those below the show notes. For anyone who enjoyed the podcast, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the YouTube and podcast channel. If you have any questions, drop them below. And if you want help in terms of scaling your own business, you can click the link below this video and you can book in a free call to find out how we can help you. And we'll see you next episode very soon. Thank you.